a religion is just absolutely uncalled for. We're, we are just mere things floating on a rock in space. We are not only figuratively, but literally stardust. You don't have to go to church on Christmas, and it is about being good, and that's what all religions are about anyway. Are you an atheist? Yeah. Gonna kill yourself? Yeah, I'd like to. So you're an atheist? Yes. I need to know what to believe in. Like what happens when you die? Yes, I don't want to be a bag of dust. David, are you an atheist? Yes. When did you become an atheist? Uh, around age 12. Believing in God makes no sense. It, it's, to, to me, it's the dumbest thing. It's, it's, it's for people that can't accept the fact that they're going to die and rot in the ground like I'm going to do, and, the, and it gives them some relief from, from that thought because it's not the nicest thought in the world. Are you an atheist? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Are you an atheist? I am. But yeah, I'm an atheist. Uh, yes, I am. Alex, do you believe in God's existence? No, I do not. How long have you been an atheist? I would say probably since I was about 15 years old. So you don't believe in the existence of God? No, not really. What happened when you were 15? Um, I started questioning things, and I really just started to think about the logic behind everything. For the most part, we are not shown the evidence for there being a higher power. If we were, I almost guarantee that almost every atheist would immediately agree to there being a higher power. Are you atheists? Yes. Yes. Why? Um, well, I just haven't seen enough uh, evidence, I suppose. I grew up in a Christian family, and just over the f few years d during high school and as I grew up, I just realized that there wasn't a lot of evidence to support that belief system. Are you open to evidence? Um, I, I think I am open to evidence. It just would have to be extraordinarily compelling, like out of this world compelling. If you could be given evidence, reasonable evidence, would, it, would you listen to it? Yeah, I would. You're someone who has no faith or no belief in a higher power or a creator, but if you were shown evidence, you would change your mind because you're open. Absolutely. Flick through the pages of the book I just put on your lap, look at the color pictures, and I'll ask you a question. Do you believe that book could happen by accident, that nothing produced the color pictures in the book, that red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet ink fell from the sky and formed itself into those beautiful pictures, and then black ink fell from the sky, or from nowhere, and formed itself into coherent words and sentences, capitals and periods and commas, making sense, page numbers fell from the sky, all in order, and then it bound itself and formed itself into a cover with artwork, and there we have a book. Obviously, Intelligent Design designed the book. Wouldn't that be correct? Yeah. Can you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Tell me, what is DNA? What is it? Deoxyribonucleic acid. And it's what makes up our bodies and our cells and everything that makes us who we are. DNA is like our biological code, kind of like binary zeros and ones. Information about us, who we are, what makes us us, parts of us, how we look. Um, how we're built, everything like that. Your genes instructed your cells how to make your eyes and what color your eyes should be and your hair and your height and your personality. Scientists call it the instruction book for life. Basically. Everything that you are or ever will be made of starts as a tiny book of instructions found in each and every cell. Every time your body wants to make something, it goes back to the instruction book, looks it up and puts it together. The book of you would have 46 chapters, one for each chromosome. Each of our book's 46 chapters is between 48 and 250 million letters long. That's 3.2 billion letters total. This is the secret language of DNA. 
This is the book of life. Instruction book for life. Yes. Instruction book for life. Yes. DNA is made up of genes, and genes give instructions to the cells as to how your body should grow. Did you know that those instructions, the instruction book of your DNA, just your DNA, was laid out end for end, would go to the sun and back a number of times? That book of instructions is so comprehensive. DNA is the genetic information encoded in the cell of every living thing that instructs our cells how to grow and how to function. It's our genes that determine whether our skin will be dark or light, have brown or blue eyes or red or green or yellow, have red hair, be brunette or blonde, be tall or not so tall, or the color of our feathers if we're a bird. Whether we're humans, fish, animals, insects, or plant life, the way our bodies look and operate has all been pre-written in the amazing book of our DNA. What do you think the mentality of someone who believes a book fell together without a bookmaker? Uh, well, they would be crazy. Do you think a book could make itself? No, I don't. Of course not. No. Utterly impossible. Yes. <laughs> if anything can happen by accident. I mean, from nothing. Um, wow. Couldn't happen, could it? I don't think so. It'd be impossible. It would be like saying uh, uh, an explosion caused uh, everything that makes a 747 airplane to all just come together by accident without some, without some intelligent thought behind it. That's, that's a good point. Do you believe DNA happened by accident? No, I think that it developed over the course of many, many millennia of evolution and development. DNA exists in every living, every living thing. Its origins don't matter. The fact that there is intelligent information tells us there must be an intelligent designer. Is this making you think? It is, and I, I do think about it from time to time. It's just, yeah, it's, it's complicated, definitely. Well, DNA is complicated, but the point I'm trying to make is very simple. Book, book designer, or bookmaker, DNA, intelligent designer. God. Does that make sense? Yes. You're an atheist? I am. What would you think the mentality of someone who thought a physical book could make itself? Oh, I think they'd be silly. Of course it can't make itself. What would you think of the mentality of someone who believed the instruction book for life, DNA, made itself? Uh, well, I think it'd be silly as well. It would need investigation. That's atheism. Absolutely. And what would you think of the intelligence of someone who believed the instruction book for life made itself? Low, low intelligence level. DNA happened by accident, um... Probably not too smart. <laughs> DNA couldn't make itself, it's impossible. Does that make sense? Yes. Is this making you think? Yes. <laughs> and what would you think of the person who believed that DNA, the instruction book for life, happened by accident? We're not just talking about human beings, we're talking about every form of life. Fleas, cats, dogs, elephants, cows, horses, trees, plants, everything has DNA. The instruction book for life. Which makes the book in your hand just seem feeble compared to the infinite intelligence that must have put the instruction book for life together. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you believe DNA happened by accident? Uh, I believe it could. I Explain it to me, how a program could make itself out of nothing on how to make a human eye, giraffe's eyes, elephant's eyes, cats, dogs, puppies, flowers, birds, trees. Every living thing has DNA that's so complex, it's mind-boggling. It must have been a genius beyond any human reasoning that put it together. And to say it happened by chance is infinitely sillier than saying a physical book happened by chance. All I'm doing is reasoning with you. I'm not arguing. I don't want to win an argument. I'm just saying, I want you to concede something that's absolute common sense. You're an atheist, so you believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. I mean, it can't be nothing. We all have to start from some point. I wouldn't say nothing created it. There had to be something there in the beginning. You like Richard Dawkins, don't you? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I like him. Do you believe nothing created everything, a scientific impossibility, which is what he believes? You don't believe in a creator of all things? If he says that, I think it's a very strange thing to say. Well, he says it. It's insane. Nothing can't create anything because it's nothing. It has to be something in the beginning. Nowhere in our history of, of human reality has something kind of just appeared out of nowhere. Do you believe that nothing created everything? 
Uh, no, because nothing can perform actions. That makes no sense. It's a default position. If you say nothing created everything, then you're agreeing with Richard Dawkins. You're mischaracterizing Richard Dawkins because Richard Dawkins, I'm sure he didn't say that. That seems ridiculous. Professor Richard Dawkins, arguably the world's most high-profile atheist, believes that in the beginning there was nothing and that nothing created everything. As he attempts to justify this belief, admitting that it defies common sense, the learned professor calls nothing something. Watch the reaction of his audience. Of course it's counterintuitive that you can get something from nothing. Of course common sense doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. It's exactly what, what's meant by, by nothing, but whatever it is, it's very, very simple. And <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> Well, I think it's a bit funny to be trying to define nothing. <laughs> Richard Dawkins, I'm sure he didn't say that. That seems ridiculous. The audience reaction confused the normally eloquent professor because he's not used to being the object of laughter. What he didn't realize was he was talking to people who were endowed by their creator with a virtue of common sense. This was just another case where the emperor has no clothes. Someone should tell this man who has deceived millions, you're talking foolishness. Is that what you believe? I mean, it can't be nothing. We all have to start from some point. But there has to be something that created everything. You just, just wasn't God. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's just evolution, how things became from one organism into many. But that doesn't solve your dilemma of the initial cause. There has to be an initial cause. If there was a big bang in space that from there issued cats and dogs and horses and cows, the sun, the moon, the stars, the seasons, and all this marvel of creation came from a big explosion, what caused the explosion? And where do the materials come from, from the explosion? And why is there such incredible order from the explosion? Every explosion I've heard of creates chaos, not order. That makes sense? Oh, yeah this is what you're looking for if you were looking for truth this is your information that you need to say wow that's logical how could all this design from the atom to the universe an incredible order just happened by accident because an atheist actually believes nothing created everything which is scientifically impossible and I'm trying to say Haley I just want you to think you're not just a blob of nothing that it came from an explosion that created order which is against nature that means that you've got purpose and meaning in the universe so it's not altogether bad news I just want a relationship with whoever built me. This is too much, too weird that it happened by accident. It didn't happen by accident. I don't feel that. In June of 2016, I interviewed theoretical physicist Professor Lawrence Krauss and asked him the same questions I asked the university students. I was limited to only asking questions, but he was very gracious and it was an honor to meet him. Lawrence, why are you an atheist? Well, you know, I, um, I don't call myself an atheist uh, any more than I call myself an a-leprechaunist. Uh, uh, in fact, I don't label myself as is. I, I, the only ist I might use is a scientist. And that's really important to me because as a scientist, I don't accept things without evidence. And, uh, and there's certainly no evidence for, for God. And, the, and all the stories about the different gods, as there have been thousands of them, all seem equally it's ridiculous. There's millions. Yeah, probably at least millions. Are you open to evidence? I'm absolutely open to evidence. In fact, I change my mind all the time. That's the great thing about being a scientist. Unlike religion, we don't assume we have all the answers. In fact, we ask the questions, and we let nature tell us the answers. I know you picked up this book before. Do you believe this book could make itself? That it, that, let, me, let me give you this scenario. Yeah. That ink fell on the pages, colored photos just manifest when ink fell out of nowhere. The sentences became coherent with periods and commas? Uh, no, but no, which is one of the reasons why the way that the Bible was written by humans, because it didn't make itself. There were some bunch of largely literate Iron Age peasants who, who were trying to understand the world and didn't know much about science, and they wrote in different forms, books, and... Uh, okay, so the, the you know, fourth the, question... Could a book arise spontaneously uh, from nothing? Absolutely. But could it make itself? That, no. There's two very different things, because you're implying design, intent, etc., which is what, of course, you do. DNA is called the Book of Life. Could 
DNA make well, itself? Well, see, that's where the question is, is, is ridiculous, because in fact, DNA doesn't make itself any more than a snowflake makes itself. A snowflake is a beautiful, beautiful thing, and, and it's assembled by nature. It doesn't make itself. It's the laws of physics and chemistry, polar molecules, that make this incredibly complex, beautiful structure. Now, the same thing with DNA. DNA is an amazing structure, and the laws of physics, chemistry, and ultimately biology, but which derives from that, will in principle explain how DNA uh, first arose. You give me the laws of polar molecules, and I'll give you a snowflake. There's no intent, no grand purpose, no, no design behind it. Even though they look designed, the illusion of design is an illusion. Natural law does indeed produce complex structures like snowflakes. But the law that produces that kind of complexity is simply the same chemical reaction repeating over and over. That is not information. What's stored in the DNA molecule is specified information, like the information found in a book or a computer program. The fact that a book requires an author and a program requires a programmer is not an illusion. It is factual as seen in the real world around us. It isn't apparent design, it is real design, as any college student can tell you. Do you believe the instruction book for life happened by chance? No. So it couldn't happen by chance, could it? No. So where did the intelligent information to selectively arrange the building blocks of DNA come from? That know-how and forethought does not exist in any of the materials from which life is made, and the laws of nature have no purposeful capacity to write a book or arrange its pages. So where did that specified information come from? Its origin is certainly supernatural. What Professor Krauss completely overlooks is the external nature of the information encoded into the DNA molecule. A complete set of software instructions directing the formation and reproduction of human beings, both male and female, and all other living things. Bill Gates once said, DNA is like a computer software program, but far, far more advanced than any software ever created. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I'll have to say the chicken. The chicken. What do you think? The chicken. Chicken. Chicken? Chicken. And what about you? The egg. Egg, okay. Was the egg fertilized? Uh, you got me. <laughs> you got me, yeah, ain't no way. Maybe God created the chicken, so then that's how the egg came. You got me, I don't know. I, I didn't think that far into it, I guess. Maybe most likely the chicken, I would say. So if the chicken came first, it then laid an egg. Okay? Was the egg fertilized? now the egg the egg yes this chicken that produced the first egg was the egg fertilized mm, it, it would have to be so there's a rooster so there was a rooster so there's a rooster and a chicken where do they come from uh, they all came from the stars you said I am we are stardust yes what does that mean for me, the most astonishing fact is that the molecules that comprise our body are traceable, are traceable to the crucibles of the centers of stars. And we are not only figuratively, but literally stardust. Okay, so where did you come from? I uh, came from the stars. No, no, you came from your parents. <laughs> Obviously I did, yeah. Where did they come from? And they came from their parents. And where did they come from? From their parents. Right back to Adam. Correct. Adam was created by God, and he made male and female, and he made the birds of the air and made them male and female so they could reproduce after their own kind. Okay, explain this to me, if you really believe in evolution. Before it had eyes, how did it see? Um, the eyes have to evolve, because the thing's evolving from stardust. Correct. Um, so they probably didn't see, they felt. They felt, did it have a brain, or couldn't have had a brain until the brain evolved? So how did it think to look for food, and where did the food come from, and why did the food evolve? And did it have lungs? Do you think the chicken thing, before it evolved into chicken, had lungs? I'm not too sure. It's all about uh, uh, survival instinct, so, you know. It's not going to survive. It didn't have lungs. And 
If I breathed air, was the air 20% oxygen as it is now, and why did the air evolve? And why did it evolve lungs? And how did it survive before it had lungs? And see before it had eyes, and think before it had a brain, and eat before it had an appetite? It doesn't really make sense when you think about it, because you've got to translate that to elephants, horses, cats, cows, human beings, every living thing that apparently evolved from stars had to evolve eyes and ears and a mouth and a nose and lungs and heart and kidneys. Let's go back to something more simple regarding that first chicken that came from the stars. Which came first in the chicken? Was it, was it its blood or its heart or its blood vessels? Which evolved first? I do not know the answer. Well, if it was the heart, why did the heart evolve when there was no blood? If it was the blood, why did the blood evolve when there was no heart to pump it around? If there are no blood vessels, how did the blood get around the body of the chicken to keep it alive if there's no heart to pump it? I've always had the doubts. It's like, we've been here for how long and we still haven't evolved, or what are we going to evolve into? Can you think of anyone that isn't fully evolved? Anything on Earth. Dogs have four legs. They have a tongue and eyes and ears. Everything's fully evolved. People have, they don't have half evolved leg. You don't see someone with a semi-evolved leg or half an ear or half a nose, half an eye, half teeth. Everything's fully evolved because the Bible says when God created all things, it was finished. So everything's finished. The fruits, the flowers, the birds, the trees, the nuts, the, the giraffes, horses, cats, cows, everything is fully finished. And what it does is disproves evolution and establishes the Bible in saying that God created everything, fully finished, with the ability to reproduce after their own kind as male and female. La France de Charles Trenet, c'est la France de tous les Français. La France rêvée, la France passée, mais jamais oubliée. C'est la France de notre enfance qu'on a gardé dans le cœur. Douce France de nos vacances qui a le parfum du bonheur. C'est le pays où la mer avec ses reflets d'argent danse le long des golfes clairs sous les ailes des oiseaux blancs. Do you think God exists? Um, a designer? I'm, I'm open to the idea, of course. You trust your eyes? To an extent, yes. Is there such a thing as a sunrise? No, it's an illusion. We move, and that's given the illusion that the sun moves. So there's no sunrise, no sunset. Don't trust your own heart, because your heart, your eyes will tell you there's water on the highway on a hot day. You'll see it shimmering. What do you stop? You wash it, clean your teeth, or have a drink. It's not even there. Your eyes are lying to you. Any sleight of hand magician will say, don't trust your eyes. And the Bible says, he who trusts his heart is a fool. Do you believe in God's existence? Um, in a sense, I guess. What sort of sense? I, I would say that there's some kind of governing unity that binds humanity and such. But I don't think of, uh, I guess, a divine leader or something like that. God itself can't be described as as a person or a being. It, it it's more of a it's more of a uh, all encompassing energy, if you will, yeah, like an energy drink. Yes, absolutely. You are a moral being. You're not like a dog or a cat. You care about justice and truth. That's why you're upset about little kids getting killed and molested because you're made in God's image. If you were a dog, you couldn't care less. But you're you're created in God's image with a knowledge of right and wrong. The the reason most people aren't Christians is because of what's called idolatry. They've got a wrong concept of what God is. Take Richard Dawkins. Have you heard of him? Of course, yes. Richard Dawkins is not an atheist. He's an idolater. What an, what an idolater normally does is pick out the, like treat, treat God like a buffet. When you go to a buffet, you take the nice things, the sweet things that you like. Well, an idolater normally says, God is merciful, love, and kind, and they just create a false God with no sense of justice. Richard Dawkins, instead of doing that, he goes through the Old Testament and takes the judgments of God, the wrath of God, and he creates a monster with no sense of mercy or justice. Richard, you, in your books, you, you've been pretty scathing about <laughs> the God of the Old Testament. Um, let me just quote you, if I, if, I, if I may. The most unpleasant character in all fiction 
misogynistic, homophobic, racist, genocidal, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, and you go on. To argue for intelligent design is one thing. To use it as evidence of the truth of Christianity is another. Have I given you something to think about today? I would say you have. It doesn't change my viewpoint. This has given you something to think about. Uh, but I don't believe in God or the Bible. Do you now believe in God? No. So you're still an atheist? You still think the book made itself? Are you now no longer an atheist? Um, I, yeah, I, I still am. You're holding on to the yeah. book made itself? Why would you do that? Are you no longer an atheist? Um... Uh, I, I would still go on as an atheist. You know in your heart God exists. I know you know for many reasons. One was, I'm like you. I was running from God, from God too. And two, the Bible says, God has given light to every man. And when you put that light out, when you dull that conscience and you're in a knowledge of God's existence, Jesus said, when that light is put out, how great is that darkness? You're like a man who takes the batteries out of a smoke detector because he doesn't like being alarmed by the smoke detector. And all he's doing is doing himself a tremendous disservice because when he goes to sleep and there's a fire, there's nothing to warn him. And you're going to go to sleep without that conscience telling you what to do because you've dulled it. You've taken the batteries out. And I'm saying, let it be renewed today. Stir up your conscience. Think about your mortality, your death. When the Bible calls an atheist a fool, it doesn't mean a clown or a court jester. When it calls him a fool, it's, it's because he's denying the inner light that God's given to every man the knowledge of right and wrong. It says, their foolish hearts were darkened and they embraced a lie rather than the truth. They believed a lie rather than the truth, which is what atheism is, it's a lie. I'm giving you evidence and facts, just as a physical book by logic and reason has a maker, so the instruction book containing infinite wisdom and intelligence and instructions beyond any human comprehension is evidence of the existence of an intelligent designer. But the reason you want to fight it is the same reason a thief doesn't want to fight a policeman. You, the last thing you want is God in your life because you love your porn, you love your marital sex, your fornication. In a sense, I'm preaching the choir because I know that you know the Creator exists. The Bible says you're given the truth by God, but you suppress it in unrighteousness. You hold it down. Every single one of us know that there's a creator, but we don't know the truth of Christianity, and that's, that's what we're called to do as Christians, bring the truth of Christianity so hey, you can live forever. This creator became a person and made it so you can have everlasting life if you're interested. If you're not, it's your choice, but I know that you want to live. So the argument for intelligent design isn't to convince people of the Christian message. It's just to show them the insanity of atheism. Isaac Newton said, atheism is so senseless. It's the father of science. And it is, it's senseless, because you're given senses. Seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling. Think of your taste buds, how incredible they are. Sitting there waiting for food to come, and they all rejoice and leap for joy when there's good food and gives you pleasure. And think of what you're able to look on the flowers and the birds and hear the birds in the morning and see the trees raising their arms in praise to God and the blueness of the sky and the warmth of the sun. That sun's 93 million miles away. We're spinning in space, 1,000 miles an hour, round and round. We're going through space at 63,000 miles an hour, and that sun is sending rays 93 million miles, and it's just warm enough to ripen your tomatoes. This is very clear evidence. It's like there's nothing to think about. It's either nothing made everything or something made everything. Some things made everything, not something in particular, not one, like, uh, not one specific thing. You know what you're trying to do? You're trying to get away from moral responsibility to God. That's really your argument. And that's what the Bible says. There has to be an intelligent mind beyond human reasoning to put DNA together. Does that make sense? That makes sense. So why can't we make the leap from there across to saying, yeah, atheism can't be true? Um... I don't know, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not really too sure. Examine your motives. There must be a hidden motive. Let me see if I can guess what it is, okay? See if I can put my finger on it. If you acknowledge that God does exist, you're admitting you're ultimately responsible to Him. I'm going right to why, why you've got such a big problem with this. This is so simple. Someone made the book. Someone created DNA. You don't want to say someone who's intelligent because you're into porn, you're into sex with your girlfriend, it gives you so much pleasure and you don't want to give it up. And if God exists, then that's going to put a big wet blanket on everything. 
And that's not an exciting thought for someone who loves pornography and fornication and all the things that come with it, because there's incredible pleasure in fornication and pornography. And so what you do is you deny the existence of God because it gives you license to do those things without a feeling of guilt. If God does exist, well, you're in big trouble. So what you do is deny his existence. Am I touching?